So we, we have seen the ruble recover. It has been strong um, uh, since the early weeks, but it's it's been strong on the back of a lot of capital controls and really on the back of a precipitous decline in Russia's uh, imports, right? So when you're controlling outflows of capital and, and when you are exporting uh, oil and gas and other commodities for uh, for dollars and euros and pounds, uh, and when you're not buying anything, that, that's going to do a wonder for your currency. Uh, what that does is mask, actually, uh, some very real changes to the structure of the Russian economy that, that are having uh, an impact. In March, news of the ruble's collapse was seen as a, a surefire sign that economic sanctions were crippling the Russian economy and having uh, that intended effect. But is the picture quite so clear-cut? Oh, well, it is It is not clear-cut. I mean, I think, frankly, uh, if, if we remember back to what people were saying uh, at the time that sanctions were first imposed, a lot of people were skeptical that they would have any impact whatsoever. They did have a, a sharp impact on the currency back then. But of course, you know, Russia does have, have, have reserves and is able to export, remains able to export um, uh, commodities. But if, if we look at what's happened to the ruble, I think to it, it's it's a bit misleading, right? So we, we have seen the ruble recover. It has been strong um, uh, since the early weeks, but it's it's been strong on the back of a lot of capital controls and really on the back of a precipitous decline in Russia's uh, imports, right? So when you're controlling outflows of capital and, and when you are exporting uh, oil and gas and other commodities for uh, for dollars and euros and pounds. Uh, and when you're not buying anything, that, that's going to do a wonder for your currency. Uh, what that does is mask, actually, uh, some very real changes to the structure of the Russian economy that, that are having uh, an impact and will continue to have an impact on not just Russians' livelihoods, but on uh, you know, Russia's ability to, to be a modern globalized economy and on its, its ability to, to fund its war. Let's just reflect on on the impact it's having on uh, the bulk of the population, average citizens living in in Russia since sanctions Mm -hmm. were introduced. What has life been like for them? Well, for a lot of people, particularly in um, in in major cities, it will seem eerily uh, normal. Right, life seems to to be going on um, much as it has before, except of course for the fact that people are being drafted into the, or called up into the military and, and 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 recruited into the military. And there's this sense of, of of risk that has led a lot of people, particularly young men, particularly people who are opposed to this Russian government, to to, to leave the country. Um, but of course, you know, this this war is not being fought on on Russian territory, so it doesn't have a daily impact on people's lives. Russians are suffering from uh, inflation uh, in, in many uh, areas, outstripping the kinds of inflation that we've been seeing in, in the UK uh, and in the West more uh, broadly, particularly when it comes to um, uh, produce, but also when it comes to uh, consumer goods. We've seen um, uh, a, a precipitous, again, drop off in uh, imports of, of, of high tech goods, particularly automobiles, white goods, that sort of thing. Uh, we've seen uh, the mortgage market and the housing market grind almost to a halt. Um, and uh, we've seen that, that uh, you know, Russian enterprises, as their ties to, to Western enterprises have, have dropped, have been unable to, to supply their their production, whether that's you know putting goods on on shelves of of, of retail stores, or whether that's you know maintaining uh, industrial enterprises, power plants, and that sort of thing, which are heavily reliant on um, on machinery and technology from from the West. 